welcome back. Recall that in the previous lecture we were uh, constructing Green's function for linear second order bond value problems. So, let me recall what we are trying to do. So, <coughs> this second order equation d by d t of p t d y by d t plus q t equal to f of t in the interval a b and we have taken the boundary conditions y a equal to y b equal to 0. So, p is a continuously differentiable function and a positive function in the interval a b q and f are continuous functions. So, <coughs> let me recall the procedure we adopted to construct the green function. So, we uh, started with w 1 w 2 2 linearly independent solutions of the homogeneous equation. So, that is f is identically 0 and uh, uh, w 1 a equal to 0. So, one of them satisfies boundary condition at one end and other one at other point a b. Okay. So, we also <coughs> normalized w 1 w 2 so that the Ronskian of w 1 w 2 is equal to 1 by p t. Okay. Under these conditions the green function of the boundary value problem was defined uh, by this expression w 1 s yes, w 2 t if a is less than or equal to s yes, less than or equal to t and other way around if s yes, if t is less than s yes, less than or equal to b okay and the solution required solution for the bond value problem uh, <coughs> or the solution y t is given by this integral a to b g t s f s. and we verified that this <coughs> y given by this integral satisfies both the boundary conditions as well as the differential equation. Okay. So, we will illustrate this one through an example simple example. <coughs> so, example very simple one. So, y double dot minus y is equal to f t. So, in the interval 0 less than t less than 1 and again I take the <coughs> boundary conditions as. So, y vanishing at both the end points 0 and 1. So, in this <coughs> so this is a second order equation with constant coefficients. So, if you study the homogeneous equation. So, E exponential t exponential minus t are 
linearly independent solutions uh, of the homogeneous equation. Okay. And we have to construct two linearly independent solutions satisfying uh, boundary conditions at different points. And if you just look at the boundary condition here, so you just w 1 t which is a linear combination of e to the t and e to the minus t and we want that to vanish at 0. So, one that easily found is sinh t. So, this is sin hyperbolic t. So, let me just you all know this thing, but let me just write that. Okay? And you see that w 1 0 is 0. Okay. So, that is a solution of the homogeneous equation and it satisfies this boundary condition. And similarly, at t equal to 1, you just see that this fellow will do 1 minus. So, again when you expand this, this is a linear combination of e to the t and e to the minus t. Hence, it is a solution of the homogeneous equation and at t equal to 1, this is 0, t equal to 1. Okay. So, now let us check whether that is normalized or not. So, let us uh, compute the Ronskian. So, Ronskian, okay. so you just uh, w 1 t w to dot t minus w 1 dot t and w 2 t. So, if you <coughs> use these expressions and write the derivative, this is simply minus c 1 c 2 and you use addition formula for the hyperbolic sine function, what you find is sinh. So, that is a constant. So, choose because we want this to be 1, Ronskian to be 1 by p t and p is 1 identically 1 here. So, choose c 1 c 2 such that c 1 c 2 is equal to minus 1 divided by sinh 1 sin hyperbolic 1 and then the green function in this case. So, g t s is minus uh, sinh s sinh 1 minus t by this normalizing thing sinh 1. If 0 less than s less than equal to t and minus sinh t into sin hyperbolic 1 minus s divided by if t is less than s less than equal to 1 and the solution solution is just simply y t is equal to 0 to t 0 to 1 g of t s f of s d s. 
So, if you take a particular f for example, if for example, f is identically equal to 1. So, we can integrate this easily we find and so you can easily check that y t is equal to. So, let me write that 1 minus e to the minus 1 divided by e minus e to the minus 1. This is coming from sinh 1. So, e to the t plus e minus 1 by e e minus 1 e to the minus t and there is a minus 1. Okay. So, you can verify this. So, this satisfies the <coughs> equation y double dot minus y equal to 1 with boundary conditions y 0 equal to y 1 equal to 0. Okay. So, as I remarked earlier, so if we again change the boundary conditions, okay, the solution w 1, w 2 they change and accordingly the green function changes. So, green function is very much dependent not only on the equation, but also on the boundary conditions. So, that you should keep in mind and we have a nice recipe uh, uh, in this case to construct the solutions of the boundary value problem via the green function. Okay. So, we will discuss the uniqueness little later. So, we have found a solution the next question obviously, is that whether it is unique or not. Okay. So, now we go to general second order <coughs> equations. other equations and see how far we can carry whatever we have done in linear case. So, second order linear equation. So, let the uh, second order uh, general equation. So, I consider this non-linear equation. So, y double dot equal to f of t y y dot. So, again this is in the interval a less than t less than b and now I take general linear boundary conditions. Okay. So, uh, not able to do much with general boundary conditions. We consider uh, <coughs> so boundary conditions b c So, a 0 y a minus a 1. So, there is no particular reason why I take it minus, but can also put plus no problem. So, a 1 y dot a is equal to uh, alpha and b 0 y b plus b 1 y dot b is equal to beta. So, in the previous <coughs> case what we had was a 0 equal to 1 and a 1 equal to 0 and alpha equal to 0 and similarly, b 0 equal to 1, b 1 equal to 0 and beta is 0. Okay. So, only the condition is that this a 0, a 1 should not vanish simultaneously. So, that we will put here. And similarly, the other condition. So, they do not vanish simultaneously one of them can be 0 fine and alpha beta are again given real numbers. Okay. So, <coughs> now we will discuss 
this. Uh, so, let me again put some numbers here for this. Uh, this is 1 a and the boundary conditions 1 b and the whole thing together called problem 1. So, I would like to discuss the existence of a solution to this problem 1. That means, we want a function y to be determined which is uh, 2 times continuously differentiable and satisfies this given differential equation and these boundary conditions at the end points a and b. See unlike in the linear case, we do not even know how to start, because here there is no concept of uh, the homogeneous equation, because everything is clubbed here. So, I cannot separate the linear part and inhomogeneous part, homogeneous part and the inhomogeneous part and uh, how to start. Okay. So, that is, uh, so we are already facing a problem, you want to <coughs> start, uh, way to start. Okay. A formal approach is the following. So, we start with an initial value problem, start with and I V P. So, this is B V P. So, this is we want to discuss and we start with an, an initial value problem. What is the initial value problem? Equation is the same. So, now I use different unknown function. So, u double dot equal to f of t u dot. Okay. So, this is second order equation and now I impose conditions only at A. So, I will not bring in B, because we are studying just some initial value problem. So, at one point we give the data. Okay. What is that data? Okay. So, you just A 0 u A which is same as the condition at A in the BVP. Okay. And now, I will have another independent condition at uh, <coughs> A only C 1 u dot A, I put an S here. And this yes is at my choice. So, this so yes is any real number for the time being. Okay. And these two conditions are linearly independent. Linearly independent. What does that mean? You cannot obtain one condition from the other, and in terms of the coefficients, this means uh, So, that means, the initial conditions are independent that is this <coughs> matrix you have a 0 a 1 a 0 minus a 1 C 0 minus C 1 is non singular that means, you have this A 1 C 0 minus A 0 C 1 not 0. Okay. That is the meaning of that linear <coughs> the conditions are linearly independent. So, by fixing, so since the second condition is at our choice by fixing C 0 C 1 we may assume. So, this is kind of normalization that a 1 c 0 minus a 0 c 1 is equal to 1. Okay. So, then you just forget it and we have <coughs> that initial value problem. So, let me just again. So, this 
I V. Okay. So, this let me call it. So, this is 2 A and 2 A 2 B. Okay. And suppose I V P has a solution. defined or <coughs> suppose uh, the IVP as a solution defined for a less than or equal to t less than or equal to b. So, you want the solution to exist all the way up to b and perhaps even beyond b, but at least we want up to b. So, here <coughs> we have to, uh, so we have to include, we have to impose certain conditions on F to ensure this. like global lipidness and other things. Okay. So, we have <coughs> now the solution for the, so let me just write again u double dot equal to f of t u u dot and we have this a 0 u a minus a 1 u dot a equal to alpha and C 0 u a minus C 1 u dot a equal to s. s is at our freedom okay, and we have normalized. So, that this a 1 C 0 minus a 0 C 1 is 1. So, these two conditions are linearly independent and we have a solution which exists for the entire interval a b. Okay. So, to emphasize the dependence on S, so denote the solution by u t and you stress this S and S is coming from the second condition we are imposing at A. Okay. And now, you form <coughs> this. So, consider the function phi of s, now I define this function. So, which is b 0 u b. So, u is the <coughs> solution of the initial value problem. So, re remember that s plus b 1 u dot b s minus beta. So, if you remember the second condition boundary condition, so it is of that form. So, I am just evaluating the <coughs> solution of the initial value problem at t equal to b. So, this is nothing but the evaluation of the initial value solution of the elision value problem at t equal to b. Okay. And now, this is a purely a function of s, because every, everything b 0, b 
uh, and beta and u now everything is fixed. So, this is just a function free from r to r ok. So, now that you have got a function defined from r to r. So, for every s I will have solution to the initial value problem and once I obtain that solution of the initial value problem I compute this thing and call it p of s ok. So, now ask the question. So, is there an s star such that p of s star is 0 that is the question ok. So, remember this phi is a function from r to r. So, this is no guarantee that there is a root of that thing. So, in case there is if yes then the solution then the function y t. So, this is the definition. So, u t a star is a solution of BVP. Okay. So, this is remember this is solution of IVP. So, this we already know and certain conditions on <coughs> the right hand side function f we always have a solution at this point ok uniqueness and other thing will not discuss. So, just there exists a solution and in addition to that if there is an s star satisfying this condition which is a root of the function phi then using that solution of the initial value problem we obtain a solution of the boundary value problem. So, in the literature this is called this is called shooting method and this is widely used in obtaining numerical solutions of the BBP. So, this is very very important method and same thing can also be used for theoretical purposes as we are studying ok. And <coughs> So, if there are more solutions to this equation, if there are more rows to this phi, then we obtain as many as solutions for the boundary value problem. So, in general we cannot say whether there is there could be no solution, there could be only one solution, there could be multiple solution and depending on that the boundary value problem will have a solution, a unique solution or multiple solutions or no solutions. Okay. So, in order to sum up, so just let me state uh, <coughs> a theorem so let me just put that theorem okay. so uh, let R be the region consisting of all triplets T U 1 U 2. So, A is less than or equal to T less than or equal to B and U 1 U 2 in R. So, this is the region and assume. So, this is our right hand side m f. So, this is a function of t u 1 u 2 is globally Lipschitz 
in R. That is, if we take f of t u 1 u 2 minus f of t v 1 v 2, this is less than or equal to some m 1 u 1 minus v 1 plus m 2 u 2 minus v 2 for all t u 1 u 2 t v 1 v 2 in the region. So, let me not write that for all uh, okay, let me write in r in r. Okay. So, then d v p has as many solutions as the uh, as many solutions as the roots of the function phi. So, for every root of this function phi, you get a solution of the uh, <coughs> bond value problem. Okay. So, rem remember that what phi is. Okay. So, this one okay, somewhat very strong condition okay, and that ensures, so this is just for the ensures, ensure that Uh, a solution of I V P exists for all T in A B. Okay. So, if you have some other means of ensuring the same thing we do not need this strong condition. Okay. So, in fact, uh, <coughs> the, let me give an example. So, an example. Somewhat <coughs> uh, difficult integration, but this doable. So, this is again second order equation. So, you uh, let me ok, let me just write y y double dot plus lambda e to the u is equal to 0 in 0 less than t less than 1 and y 0 equal to 0 y 1 equal to 0. Okay. Let us consider this b v p. Okay. So, if you follow this shooting method, so what we should do is this <coughs> consider the i v p uh, u double dot plus lambda e equal to 0 and one initial condition is same as the one coming from the BVP and second one we want linearly independent. So, it has to be in u dot equal to yes. Okay. S is at our choice. Okay. So, as an exercise write down the <coughs> solution in explicitly. So, this can be done. So, there is no problem with that. So, in fact, you can use the <coughs> conservative nature of the equation 
So, you can easily integrate once and you convert that into a first order equation and then using method of uh, you separate the variables and integrate it. So, it is bit complicated, but doable. Okay. So, you can uh, explicitly solve it and in the solution you see that the dependence of S very clearly in that. Okay. Now, you next check using that solution okay, using that solution check for which S yes, for which S yes, if there is any it is not, it's not guaranteed if there is any if there is any uh, the solution u also satisfies the other boundary condition namely u of 1 equal to 0. Okay. And if and also you check <coughs> check for the uniqueness whether there is one yes or more yes check for uniqueness so it's a good exercise so you will <coughs> uh, see how this shooting method uh, is at work so why this example so i why i want to <coughs> So, this example is this in this case this f of t u u dot very very simple it is just minus lambda u if you want to write it okay. and this is not globally lifted not global. Okay. But yet the solution exists for all t in the interval 0 1. So, that is important. Okay. So, there are I mean that is one, one wants to state as a theorem one has to be very stringent. So, maybe we put lots of conditions, but in practice uh, such uh, stringent conditions may not be required. Okay. So, for example, this one. So, even without uh, the assumption of globally lift change, you can write down the solution explicitly and you see that the solution exists for the entire interval 0 1. Okay. So, this is uh, uh, one example okay. and uh, <coughs> so let me again continue this why, okay, why this shooting method. Okay. So, what is happening? shooting method. So, geometric picture. So, here <coughs> so this is A, this is B. So, for let me just for take for example, simple thing u A equal to 0, u B equal to 0 just for the illustration. Okay. Uh, <coughs> so, what we are doing is, so starting here but with a velocity. So, u dot a is equal to s u dot a is equal to s. Okay. So, we are releasing we are shooting some particle from here and it may just go somewhere depending on s at b and if I choose another s it may go somewhere. So, we would like to determine an S for which we eventually go there. Okay. So, that is why it is called shooting method. So, by changing the initial velocity in this particular setup of boundary conditions, uh, we are looking for a particular velocity uh, with which if we shoot, we are reaching the destination. Okay 
namely u b equal to 0. Okay. So, that is the idea. So, that is why it is called shooting method. Okay. So, again let me go back to uh, the analytical description. Okay. So, we started with let me again go back to y dot equal to f t y y dot and a 0 y a b 0 y b minus plus b 1 y dot b is equal to beta. So, this is the b v p call it 1 a 1 b and con the corresponding initial value problem. So, u double dot equal to f of t u u dot and a 0 u a minus a 1 u dot a is equal to alpha and c 0 u a minus c 1 u dot a equal to s. Okay, and you are normalizing. So, a 1 c 0 minus a 0 c 1 is 1. Okay, so, normalizing that and we are calling the solution u stressing the importance and the dependence of s and then we found this function coming from the second boundary condition b 0 u b s plus b 1 u dot b s minus beta and whenever there is a root of. So, if phi s star is 0 then uh, y t defined by. So, this is definition u of t a star solves b v p 1. Okay. And if there are more roots, then we will also have more solutions for the BV problem and this follows from uniqueness of the initial value problem. Okay. So, the important thing is this. So, we are uh, stated the theorem using the global Lipschitz of f. So, we have existence and uniqueness. So, later on we also need uh, continuous dependence on this solution we are going to differentiate with respect to s and as of now. So, existence and uniqueness results of i v p are giving us the solutions of the bond value problem provided provided this function phi uh, has roots. If this has no roots then we are by this method we are not able to get produce any solutions of the BVP. Okay. So, that is. Uh, so, you can imagine if we go to higher order equations or even first order systems. So, this phi say so remember here the phi is from r to r okay, and soon we will state a result where existence of roots is guaranteed conditions on phi. Uh, so, if you go to higher order equations or more general first order systems of first order equations, then this phi will be a mapping from some Euclidean space to some other Euclidean space and the study of its zeros, existence of its zeros becomes more complicated and that is where you need the 
tools from non-linear analysis. In this one dimensional case, we can do all that thing just using uh, one dimensional calculus and that is what we are going to do. So, let me just uh, uh, state a result and we will discuss uh, more detail next time. So, just I will just write a theorem. In addition to uh, the hypothesis hypothesis of global Lipschitz, etcetera. So, we have also several conditions on the coefficients, etcetera. Assume, so this is some extra assumptions on the non-linear uh, right hand side. So, del f by so, remember f of t u 1 u 2. So, that is the right hand function. Okay. So, <coughs> del f 0 and del f by u 2 bounded. Okay. And so, a 0, a 1 non negative product, b 0, b 1 non negative, and a 0 and b 0 do not vanish simultaneously. So, this is the condition. So, this means a 0 a 1 are of the same sign. And similarly, b 0 b 1 and a 0 b 0 do not vanish simultaneously. So, this is the condition. Then, b v p has a unique solution. So, we will uh, prove this theorem because it is quite interesting, bit technical, but it uses only one dimensional calculus. So, the idea of the proof is let me just state that idea of the proof. So, look at this phi again from R to R. Okay and show that phi has a unique root. S star that is phi of S star is 0 and there is no other uh, yes for which phi vanishes. So, even in one dimensional case, okay, we have of course, several uh, uh, conditions. So, one of the conditions to have such a result in one dimensional case is to show that this <coughs> phi is a function of s. Okay. So, you show that d phi by d s Okay, next time we will do that d phi by d s is bounded away from 0. Okay. So, this is one sufficient condition under which this is true and what we are aiming at these conditions additional conditions on uh, f and also on the coefficients. Okay. 
ensure this ok that is what we use one dimensional calculus uh, using this hypothesis to show that this d phi by d s is bounded away from 0 and then the calculus lemma will give us the unique root satisfying this thing and that will prove that BVP has a unique solution. So, we will see next time. Thank you.